This little Optiplex 760 has been in our family for at least seven or eight years, and in that time it's been powered by a Core 2 Duo E7400. However, recently it started feeling a little bit sluggish, so I thought a CPU upgrade was in order. So the first thing I did was go over to the Dell website and take a look at the official technical guidebook. Now there's quite a lot of CPUs on this list, including some of the more expensive CPUs like the Q9450, Q9550, but I was very surprised to see that there's no Q6600. Um, the big problem with that, of course, is that some of these higher end CPUs are very expensive and you know, costing 30, if not more in the UK, whereas the Q6600s are still only six or seven pound, which represents great value if all you want it to do is browse the web, do a bit of word processing, send a few emails, etc. But I thought I would take a chance anyway, so I've gone ahead and ordered a Q6600. Now it's important to get the SLACR revision because this one actually runs at a lower wattage. Um, which means it, it stays a little bit cooler, which is important in OEM systems where the cooling isn't the best. But I thought, you know, the first thing in this video I wanted to do is just answer that question for people. Does this chip work in an Optiplex 760? So let's go ahead and get this installed. And as you can see, it works perfectly. So if there's anyone else out there wondering whether this chip will work in their Optiplex 760, then the answer is a definite yes. Um, but now that's done, I thought let's move on and see if we can actually do the tape mod on this to up the frequency a bit. As you can see at the moment, this runs at 2.4 gigahertz, which is um, standard. And on the standard bus speed of, it's meant to be 1066, but this actually says 1063 for some reason. Um, so let's go ahead and see if we can tape mod this. So here you can see my little Optiplex 760 small form factor. I've already taken the lid off. Um, and actually taking out the CPUs on these is, is really easy. There's one screw on either side of the, of the main heat sink. You need to lift the DVD driver out of the way just to get that second screw there. Um, this is a bit easier on my system because I'm not using the, the big three and a half inch disk drive that normally sits behind this heat sink. You'd need to remove that first if you still got that in your system. Um, but once them two screws are out of the way, you literally just lift up the heat sink there and undo the CPU clip and go ahead and lift out the CPU. Now to perform the actual tape mod itself, you'll need three things. You're obviously going to need your CPU, but you're also going to need some decent quality electrical tape. Now I've got Scotch 33 tape, which is very good, um, but any good quality sticky tape will do. And then the last thing you're going to need to do this mod is actually use, you know, you need a sharp knife for this um, because you're going to need to cut very, very thin strips of the tape. So this is an example here. Now what I like to do is actually stick it to the surface and then cut a very small strip off. You can see that I've, I've done that here. I think this approach is a bit safer and it's a bit easier to get a nice small strip of the tape. And then once you've got your little strip of tape, lay your CPU down face down, um, identify the notches at the very top of the CPU. There's one on each side, you can see them here. Now all we want to do is cover that very first contact under the left hand side uh, notch. Now, when I was looking into this, there's various things on the internet saying you need to cover one contact. Other things said you need to cover two contacts. Now, I did this first. I just covered the one contact. And as you can see in this next video here, as we pan across from the computer itself, which is connected up to this monitor here, just to demonstrate that this is you know, a real computer um, and this mod is actually working. Um, you can see now that we're running at um, 2,992 megahertz, so just under three gigahertz. Um, and the bus speed is also a bit higher now. I mean, it's again, it's meant to be 1,333, but for some reason, um, CPU-Z under-reads the frequency of the front side bus. Um, but this works. It, it's been completely stable. Um, so I hope that helps some of you.